All right, number four, um, we're given one of the function values and we want to find the other five. And it just gives us sine, sine of theta is equal to negative one over eight. And then they tell us that this comes from quadrant three. So this is one, two, three, this one down here. So that means my angle is here. It's always drawn with the horizontal line. So either up here, down here, up here, down here. All right, so this is going to be theta. <clears throat> From theta, we have opposite, because this is opposite over hypotenuse. All right. So opposite, this means going down, so negative 1. So this side has to be negative 1. Hypotenuse has to be 8. Okay, that's always going to be a positive number. Given that this is on the left side, x is going left, that means I know that this number is going to be negative. So whatever I get is going to be negative. So I'm going to use Pythagorean's theorem to try to figure out this identity. So we have C, uh, A, and B. Okay. So we're going to say negative 1 squared. plus b squared equals c squared, which is 8. So that gives us 1 equals, sorry, 1 plus, not equals, 1 plus b squared equals 64. Subtract 1, so that gives us b squared equals 63. And then if we do the square root of both sides, b equals now 63 doesn't have a perfect square but 63 is equal to 9 times 7 and 9 has a perfect square square root of 9 is 3 so i can bring that 3 out and the 7 will stay under the square root so if you can find a perfect square that might be a faster way to reduce it now i do know that this is going to be negative because that's the quadrant that we're in so this is going to be a negative 3 square roots of 7. All right, so based on that, once I have sine, this is the one that was given. Okay, I can figure out CSC, cosecant, CSC, because these are reciprocals. So if I just flip this, that will give me 8 over 1, negative 8 over 1, which just gives me 8. Negative 8, that is, negative 8. Gotta, can't lose that sign, negative 8. All right, so I got CSC and sine. So when you get one, you get another one for free. Now that we have our missing value, we can find cosine. And we can also find secant. And then once we do those two, we can do tangent and cotangent. All right, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent would be negative 3 square root of 2. Sorry, negative 3 square root of 7. I don't know what I'm saying, square root of 2. That's one of the common ones on the unit circle. So I'm just used to saying square, square root of 3 or square root of 2. All right, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is over 8. So this one is going to be flipped negative 8 over 3 square root of 7 and it says to rationalize all denominators so I got to multiply by square root of 7 so what that means is negative 8 square root of 7 that square root term comes up here remove the square root here 3 times 7 21 so this is what we get for that one and then tangent is opposite over adjacent so opposite will be negative 1 over and this 3 is kind of confusing let's make Roman numeral 3 for quadrant 3 opposite adjacent adjacent is what we found negative 3 square root of 7 rationalize denominator Negative over negative is a positive. 
So that means we get square root of 7. So only move the square root term. And then take off the square root. 3 times 7 gives us 21. So that would be a positive square root of 7 over 21. And then from this point, if we just flipped it, cotangent would be 3 square root of 7. Negative divided by negative again would be positive. And I'm sorry. I didn't realize I cut that off. <coughs> I guess I got this a little bit too long. Can't see the full paper. All right, cosine. Is this the one we decided on for cosine? Negative 3 square root of 7 divided by 8. And then tangent was square root of 7 over 21. Once we have these, the counterparts are just the reciprocals. So we just got to flip them. Negative 8 secant is negative a squared of 7 over 21. And then cotangent is 3 squared of 7, positive. 